Today we're going to unbox and playtest the Warble MIDI Wind Controller. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing with any other pipers in your life. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. All right, guys, today we are unbagging, unboxing, unwrapping a Warbler MIDI wind controller with the accessories that uh, will turn this into kind of a practice electronic illin pipe. I'm very excited. Now, being a MIDI controller, it's not going to make any sound right out the box, so I'm going to have to hook this up to some other stuff. Let's get at it. Okay, a box. And the bag. So, this is going to allow me to hook it up to the wind controller end and over pressure it with my arm because on the illin pipes you need to over squeeze to get to the second octave so that's what that is for let's get untaped from that let's put that over here this is going to connect the bag to the wind controller and is there anything else in here oh the receipt okay that bag is empty oh there we go i was opening it wrong Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, we would like to thank you for purchasing the Warble. To begin, I suggest reading the Quick Start Guide and User Manual located at the website shown here. If you have questions, the Warble form is a good place to ask them. You can always email us at the provided link here. Thanks again, and I hope you make wonderful music. Thanks, Andrew Mori. So, Mr. Andrew, I'm excited to test your product here. Okay, we got a uh, USB cable here, it looks like. And we have uh, a typical Android style cable here. Okay. We have some silicon grease here. Oh, and a sticker. I like stickers. Okay. Now let's open the actual warble itself. So this is nice. Comes in a nice box. Um, it's got a logo right on it. So that's lovely. And let's take a look. Okay, so this is the, it's going to plug into the bottom and it's going to allow me to play it off the knee so I can play it in a staccato style as is often done with the Illin pipes. We've got a little bit of desiccant there. Ah, here we go. It is quite tiny. Wow. It's got several buttons on the back, okay. Optical controllers. So I can see that uh, where my thumb wants to go, there is just a screw, but there's buttons. Uh, I'm going to be very curious to see what all these can do from what I can see. You can control the regulators with these and some other stuff, so that's pretty exciting. But the finger spacing feels really nice. It's um, it's right, I'd say just like a, a Highland bagpipe in terms of its finger spacing. An inland pipe would typically have a wider uh, top than that. So I'm going to go through all the documentation and see what I need to do to have this make some sound and uh, give it a go for you guys. So. Stay tuned. All right, I've got this all hooked up and I'm using Appcordian's Celtic Sounds Illin Pipe app and it sounds fantastic. Um, I have the bag attached going into the pressure sensor. I have this here and through this app, there's a lot of different settings. There's two different styles of drone sounds. I'm gonna start with the Lynch. Um, you can adjust the volume of the channel to the drones, uh, the amount of reverb, vibrato, a bunch of other stuff, the type of reverb there is, as well as the key. Uh, right now I actually have it in C sharp. Let's go ahead and put it in D. And to start the drones, we're just gonna... There's a button I can program on this to do it. I haven't done that yet. I'm just having some fun with this app. So let's get this working.
see, it sounds absolutely fantastic. So that is in the key of D with Lynch drones. Let's go ahead and move it over to Crowley drones. So there you get to hear it with the Crowley drones. Now let's try a couple of different keys. So we've been in D, let's go all the way down to B flat. Some church reverb here. Now let's head over to the middle and hit the C for a bit. And we're gonna go back to the, we're gonna do some chamber reverb on this one. Now, let's go ahead and try some room reverb and put it in C sharp and go to some Lynch drones just to hear all sorts of different things here. Finally, let's hit B and let's go back to the hall reverb this time, which is what we started with. Yeah, there's regulators too. This app is cool. So remember again, this is just a, um, a controller. So this is one of many apps you can use with it. This is the only one I'm going to be, well, messing around with for now. And there are three additional buttons on the back and I know you can program it to actually play the regulators. So with my thumb, I could actually have three of the different regulators. Yeah, there tends to be four combinations or more, but you can at least get some flavor of that regulator sound in there. Um, and Again, I've seen another guy do it in a video, so I know it's possible. Um, this actual simple little bag here works surprisingly well, if not terribly attractive, let's not kid ourselves, but it gets the job done of letting you over squeeze and get to that second octave. Um, though I do think I have a spare wind cap and I'm probably going to mount this in that wind cap and uh, maybe devise myself some sort of bag that I can attach all this to um, that it looks maybe a little bit more traditional than the um, cold water bottle. So to set this thing up initially, I downloaded the Warble app from the App Store and then hooked the provided cable in with the uh, camera connector cable that I had to purchase separately. Uh, if you don't own a USB standard USB-A to lightning connection for an iOS device, you'll need to pick one of these up. You can get them for about 15 bucks on Amazon. Then once you have the app downloaded and have it all plugged in, I went ahead and put the bell sensor on initially as well as kind of hooked it up to the whole bag. And this was, it was a little tricky. I blew a little bit of air into the bag and then just stuffed the cork in while there was, you know, still some air in it. Seemed to work. And then I wanted it to connect. So I then went in and connect to Warble. Press that. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the sound so we can hear it.
This is the built-in sound. You can hear it's not quite as rich and uh, thick as the sound we got from the other app, but that's just fine. This is really for testing. All right, so you can look across the top now and see that it has three different settings. It has instrument one for tin whistle and flute. It has instrument two for inland pipes, and it has instrument three for the Scottish pipes. For today, we're just gonna be doing instrument number two, the Ellen pipe. So you can just click on that tab and it takes you to this menu right here. Now, the first thing you wanna make sure is that the uh, box kind of uh, on the right, the note trigger and register control, you're gonna to wanna to set that up to overblow and then you're going to want to, turn the sound off real quick here. You're gonna to wanna to go into advanced. Once you go into advanced, you can hit bag defaults. So hit bag defaults. Now I found that 75 and 25 for this little water bottle were a little much. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this down to about 50 and about 20, 57. Let's see how we're doing. Let's turn the sound back on. So I'm just squeezing with different pressure on the bag here to get those different notes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the volume off here. Now, there's all sorts of other things you can do. There is vibrato control, and it tells you which, you can select which holes are gonna be for vibrato. There's expression. There's a lot of things to play with in here. So really take your time if you get one of these and play around with this and get this thing set up to sound the way you want it to. Now, one of the coolest things that I have to still learn how to do is the buttons here on the bottom. So you can see right now the topmost button is set up to change the slide and vibrato mode. The second one I currently have set up for changing the register, and the third one is set up for none. Eventually, I want these to be set up for the regulators, and for that, I'm gonna have to learn what channel I need to send the information to, and the other information over here for which sounds in uh, my MIDI program are related to the various regulator uh, patches. Once I figure this information out, it will be in the description below. If you don't see it yet, it means I haven't figured it out yet. But if you have one of these and you want to have the button set up for regulators, I may well do another video, but when I do have the MIDI information for these channels, I will put it down below um, so you can type it into your own Warble app here and get your regulators working. To do that, you'd want to have it, each one of them set up to send MIDI message and you'd want it set up on momentary. And the reason for momentary is means that it's only going to be sending the information while the button is pressed. So that's very much like just resting um, the side of your hand on the regulators, and then when you're done, you take it off. And there's only three, so remember that. There's only three regulators, so you have to kind of pick and choose which ones are gonna be doing what. At the very bottom of the app, you can see um, the sensor calibration. There's the thumb in the back, and then as you see, I'm working each finger down and there's the sensor on the bottom. I haven't had to do any sort of calibration. There's all sort of auto calibration, safe calibration, everything being just at zero and the way it was set up from the factory has been just fine for me. If you find, however, that's not working for you, you can go in here and um, read more about it on the information screen right there and figure out how to get it calibrated for you. So that's a little bit about the Warble app right here and how you can go in and kind of get it set for you. You can hear that the sound from the built-in Warble app is not as good as the Appcordian app I'm using. But it certainly works. It would work well enough for practicing. So I have it in the Scottish bagpipe mode here and you can hear with the built-in sample there's kind of a grace note sound already built in with it. So if you try to do like a doubling. It's just kind of a little bit weird. Let's silence this real quick though. And let's go to the accordion app. 
See, this puts it automatically back into Illin pipe mode, but with weird tuning. So let's get out of that before we mess anything up. And then to talk just for a minute here, we do have the Appcordion Illin pipe app right here. Drone on and off, as you can see there. You could actually play it with your fingers. Uh, I'm not gonna bother to figure out all of that, but you can see all the things you can adjust here. The key of the instrument, You can, the channel volume versus the drone volume, the style of drones. I think I'm more of a Lynch style drone on this. Different types of reverb over here. And then, so if you're gonna play it by hand, you'd hit the octave key. But again, that's all controlled for in the uh, wind controller itself. Just wanted to kind of show you the screen here of what it looks like in the Inland Pipe app from Appcordion. I am a big fan of this warble right here. It is so much fun to play. It sounds great through the apps. It took me just a few minutes to get it set up and going and playing some tunes. And that's exactly what I think we're all wanting from uh, our uh, technology. Now, I'm kind of a tech guy already, so I know some stuff about MIDI, so maybe my learning curve was a little bit quicker, but I think with the documentation they provide on their website, the forum they have, and all of that, I think you could get it set up pretty quickly. There you go, everybody. A little bit of information on a product I hadn't known about until, well, very recently, and I'm happy to share it with you guys, the Warble. It is a great MIDI controller. It isn't all that expensive. Don't get me wrong, it's a few hundred US dollars, but I think it's definitely worth it and I see a lot of potential. I think I might even hook this up to an Illin pipe wind cap and maybe fashion some sort of other bag that's a little bit more um, traditional looking, maybe a little easier to control than just this uh, water bottle bag that it comes with. But that said, this one worked just fine, but for on stage use, because I can see me using this with my rock band Rathmore um, for all sorts of things. You can't really mic an Illin pipe over a drum kit, not easily. So this could solve a lot of problems on stage for getting a rich, thick Illin pipe sound. So if I do come up with a special rig, I will have a link up here to a video where I'll show you kind of everything I do to get this stage ready for live performance and what I feel I needed to do to do that. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and share with any other pipers that might have a little uh, need for some electronic Illin piping in their life. If you want more personalized instruction, I do give Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the email you see right there, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet. I hope to work with you soon. All right, everybody. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>